Welcome to the Fantasy Football Sackos Podcast with your hosts, Jason Shellcross and Alex Krobe. Let's go! Fantasy Football Sackos, Alex and Jason, six weeks in the book. Alex, how are you doing this week? Are you uh, scheduled to get your first W of the season or are you looking at 0 and 6? Why do we start the show with this every week? It It's just annoying, honestly. Um, <laughs> theoretically, I should win. I said that last week, too. And I've been saying it in every league every week. And yeah, you know what? Yes, I'm going to win this week. And I'm going to win our league after starting 0-5. Put that uh, on the books now. Um, the Bears are in first place. So real life football is going great. Uh, I will be celebrating Packmas at a later date with the Packers getting their ass kicked by Tam Brady and the Bucks, and uh, yeah, it, kind of an interesting day of football. Low score, lower scoring, or p- fantasy players weren't scoring that much. It seemed like across all of my leagues, scoring was just way down, and so you're starting the first sets of games and you're like oh man i am not scoring that much and you kind of look everywhere else and you're like man nobody else is scoring either <laughs> so it kind of gives you a fresh breath of uh of uh exuberance to to pick up a w this week so yeah definitely a little little interesting week we have some players to talk about looking forward to it this this seems like a classic week where people are going to be spending money because they feel like they have to spend money and there's not necessarily that many people to go spend money on. Yeah, we'll see. It depends on uh, who misses time and if anybody does, how long. There are there are actually quite a few injuries t- uh, today. It just seems like they weren't necessarily as severe. Um, we'll, we won't know a whole lot more until we get some MRI results and those things back later. But let's dive into these waivers. So obviously, first week of or first show of the week is waiver wire show. Uh, go ahead, hit that like button, subscribe, ring the bell. If you're watching on YouTube, we did hit a hundred subscribers over the weekend since our last show. So, Hey, thank you guys, everybody for watching. Uh, we love making these podcasts for you. So with that, let's just dive in here. Uh, let's start at quarterback. My first waiver wire pickup of the week at QB is Justin Herbert. He's averaging almost 22 fantasy points per game since taking over in week two. Uh, He lit up New Orleans for four touchdowns in week five on bye this week and has the Jaguars on tap for week seven, who are giving up the eighth most fantasy points to quarterbacks. He's rostered in 46% of leagues, making him barely eligible for this show. How much fab would you go uh, spend to try to pick up Justin Herbert? A dollar or two just to outbid somebody with a zero bid. Uh, Chances are that, uh, you know, again, people aren't going to be hyper bidding on on quarterbacks because they either have one or they don't or they're just comfortable streaming on a week to week basis and might just throw zero bids out there so if you want to like lock him in it's a dollar or two probably in my opinion i would not go much more than that he's been super impressive for for a rookie i mean he got thrown in after tyrod got his lung deflated by that doctor in week two and Deflate has gate. just you know kind of taken the reins 2.0 yeah. No. <laughs> yeah was that bill belichick <laughs> um which is it's calling in favors across the country to take out starters. Um, but yeah, I mean, since he started, you know, through over 300 yards the first week against Kansas City, and he didn't even know he was playing over 300 in his worst game against Carolina. Uh, and I mean, since then, three touchdowns, four touchdowns. Keenan Allen value has been has been through the roof since he came back. Uh, one thing to monitor is, is Keenan Allen's health. Uh, we're not sure what his back injury looks like. So if he's not playing, Mike Williams would be kind of the de facto guy in that offense going forward. Mostly because Austin Eckler is still going to be out. We don't know what the running back situation looks like. Joshua Kelly has been very underwhelming since the first week. So it might be the Justin Jackson and Mike Williams show with Justin Herbert, which might decrease his value slightly. But from a quarterback perspective, he's been really good. He does get a couple rushing yards every week. I would like to actually see him run the ball a little bit more because he seems athletic enough to do it. But yeah, Jacksonville. Not a great offense. Uh, Minshew was fine today against Jacksonville. Um, yeah. But yeah, I would expect him to to rip to to rip apart Jacksonville. Um, pretty good. 
Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. Uh, Did I say Minshew was good against Jacksonville? I meant Stafford was fine, um, but they they destroyed him on the ground. So it it just depends. I think Herbert's going to have a big game um, because the the ground game hasn't been there for them so far. So who he's throwing to, I don't know. But yeah, a dollar or two. They're, uh, the Chargers are having some issues running the ball. They're missing three starters along that offensive line, including Pouncey, their center. So it's been very difficult for them up front. Um, I don't think anybody's really been able to do it effectively. The most fantasy value out of the backfield has been reception wise for whoever's, whoever's in on third downs and two minute offense, getting those short receptions has really been the one presenting any sort of meaningful value. I was hoping it would be Josh Kelly, but it hasn't been uh, with Justin Jackson coming back healthy. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think Justin Herbert, I think you're right. You could probably get him for a couple bucks. If you want to be sure to get him, I would go maybe as much as five. But what I really think is, is, and this is just general advice, not just for Herbert, but for anybody, when you are bidding on players in a fab system, you do not want your bids to end in five or zero because that's what most people's bids end Mm -hmm. in. And so you want to either, do you want to decide, hey, I'm only willing to spend 30 bucks on him? Okay, well, go 31 or 32 then. And just to get yourself a little bit ahead because most people end their bids in fives and five dollar increments and so that's sort of what i've learned over the years of playing fab waiver systems is that's you have a lot more success getting players if you just throw an extra dollar or two on on a bid um now our next quarterback teddy bridgewater of the carolina panthers averaging just about 17 fantasy points per game I think he's really just a matchup based play. We saw what he did against the Falcons last week. Uh, he had a very mediocre game in, in week six. Has the Saints on tap in week seven, who are giving up the fourth most points to quarterbacks right now. He's rostered in about 35% of leagues. Again, I mean, he had the Falcons two weeks ago. This week, he didn't do very well uh, against the Bears, but really nobody has. And then next week against the Saints and then the week after that, hey, Falcons again. So I think he could be putting up 20 plus fantasy points in three out of four of those weeks. Um, This week against the Saints included, I would probably spend fab wise two bucks, three bucks. I really think you could get him with a zero bid. Um, But if it depends on how desperate people are in your in your league to try and get a QB. But what about you? Yep. To, to, totally agree. Uh, the next three are, are pretty good at New Orleans, home against Atlanta, at Kansas City, who just got torched by Derek Carr last week. We didn't, we're not sure what Josh Allen's going to do against him because we're filming on a Sunday here. Uh, but my assumption is, is that they give up a lot of deep passes. So, yeah, I mean, really, the next three weeks are, are right in Teddy B's uh, wheelhouse. He also had eight carries for 48 yards against the Bears um, today, which is Super encouraging because he's always seemed like he could be a mobile quarterback and maybe, you know, he's fully comfortable back from that injury a couple of years ago. Um, a couple of weeks ago against Arizona, he had six for 32 on the ground. And again, he, he's got all those weapons, too. He's got those three good, quick wide receivers. And maybe most importantly, you might, you're going to see the return of Christian McCaffrey here, um, potentially even this upcoming week. And... You know, we all know what he can do out of the backfield. If you can go ahead and pencil those 60, 70 receiving yards in uh, that that's only going to help his value and open up that offense even more um, by getting the ball to Robbie Anderson and DJ Moore. So, yeah, I, I think, again, Teddy Bridgewater, fine option going forward, especially with those matchups in the next three weeks. So if you're desperate at quarterback and you're looking for somebody, he would be the guy. I actually would prefer Teddy Bridgewater over. um over Herbert, in in my opinion, just based on the matchups the next couple of weeks. I'll give you that, I guess. But I th- I would say uh, season long, I would pick Herbert to finish ahead of Teddy. So that's sort of my thoughts on Probably. that. Um, all right, let's move yep. into some running back ads. Um, and let's start with some injury based ads. So there there were a lot of sort of ticky tack injuries that pushed players out from games. Um, the most serious of which is Miles Sanders had a knee injury today at the end of a 74 yard run in the third quarter. He does have an MRI scheduled, um, 
to get that looked at. I mean, Ertz also went out and has an MRI scheduled, but that's on his ankle. So hopefully it, it sounds less serious. But back to Miles, if he's out and missing an extended period of time with a knee injury, um, you're looking at Boston Scott there as the ad. They have a short week this week with a Thursday night game scheduled against the Giants. I don't think that he plays if he's hurt enough to get his knee looked at with an MRI on a short week. I think that Boston Scott becomes probably one of, if not the priority ads, um, probably the most value. However, I think it, if it's on a, maybe it's only on a short term for a, a week or two. I'm not sure. Um, it depends on what the MRI results show. But Boston Scott currently rostered in about 11% of leagues. If it's, I'll ask you the fab question two ways because we don't know how serious the injury is with to his knee. If it comes back and yep. it's something mi- more minor like an MCL or PCL and he's out like two to four weeks or, you, you know, something like that, just call it four because maybe it's two to four or four to six. Or maybe it's only yep. a couple. Like, how much fab are you spending on Boston Scott if it's that way versus if it's a season ender? How much would you go out and drop on Boston Scott? Yeah, so my I'm anticipating that he's going to be out the next three weeks in my analysis here because he's got, you know, we, you just said Giants on a short week, home against Dallas, and then a bye week in week nine. So if it's anything that's somewhat serious, he's not going to be playing the next three weeks which would open up for Boston Scott. Obviously, it's, if it's more serious than that, then you're getting into week 10, 11, 12. And like, that's basically most of the season anyway. So, you know, it, for me, so Boston Scott week one, he had nine carries in Miles Sanders absence against Washington. He had 11 total touches, um, six points, nothing, nothing to write home about. It, you know, I don't know how much there is to like about that Eagles offense right now. We, be, you know, they get way behind and then Carson Wentz gets scores a bunch of points in garbage time. I actually wanted to talk about Carson Wentz as a as a pick upable quarterback because three of the last four weeks he's had over 20, but he's rostered in like 64 percent of leagues or something like that. So, I mean, he has proven that Carson Wentz is good. Now, when it comes to Boston Scott. Uh, I mean, if he's going to stay involved in the passing game, um, he had two catches for five yards after Miles Sanders went out when they were playing catch up. My guess is, is that if he, so, let's assume that he plays the next two weeks and then bye week and then Sanders comes back. I think you're probably looking at like 15 percent. If if Miles Sanders is going to be out longer than that then I think you could justify going li- like if let's say Miles Sanders is out for the year then I think you could go like 60 if Miles Sanders is going to be out for the next like six weeks which puts him back around fantasy playoff time then I think you discount it down to like 35 percent yeah um yeah I would say he's probably out until after the bye week, which gives you three weeks of no usage. I would agree. But that's probably, that's really only two weeks for Boston Scott. So two weeks of Boston Scott in a terrible offense, I would probably spend 15 to 20% of fab just because I don't think, I don't think that there's a whole lot of points there. He's a starter. He's a starting running back. Yeah. Um, If it's the rest of the season, I agree with you. I'm probably up at, I'm up higher, certainly, but I'm, it's still not an exciting role and he's undersized at the position. I'm really not sure how much fantasy value he'll really have. I don't think he's a top 12 back the rest of the season. I would probably say top 20 to 25, but a 30 to 40% I think would be as as high as I'd be willing to go. And if I missed out on him, I missed out on him because he's, he, he would be what I think Miles Sanders is. And that's like a low end RB two high end flex play because that there's, there's just that offense is so bad this year. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm there with you. And, and we've talked about our philosophies throughout this, but for me, it comes down to save your sauce. Don't spend your fab until you get that big injury to a to a main guy in like week 10, 11, 12 that can win you the title. I don't think that this is this, even if Sanders is out for the rest of the season. And I'm not anticipating that to be the case. Um, 
And so it comes down to what is your risk threshold from a fab perspective? And do you even want Boston Scott to, you know, I think unless you're really desperate for a running back, this is a really tough one just because their offenses look so bad. And even when Boston Scott was the only guy there at the beginning of the season, he still wasn't even doing that much. So this, this is a really tough one. Uh, for me, and, and I know I just threw out the 15, 35, 60 numbers. I, like me personally, if I'm going out and bidding on him, I'm going to cut that in half just, just because it's a bad offense. But I think that's probably what you have to bid to get him in your leagues. I understand what you're saying. Um, all right, let's move on to our next running back. Again, injury base. Joe Mixon left Sunday's game with a foot injury, tried to play through it. And then ultimately left the game for good around the eight minute mark um, at home against the Browns in week seven. If he's not able to play, you got to fire up Geo in every league uh, who is only rostered in about 3% of all leagues. Assuming that Mixon is given at least one week off to try and rest the ankle. How much money are you trying to go out and spend on Geo? I mean, Geo's getting goal line carries even with Mixon healthy and has a small, small role. I'm, I'm actually surprised he's not rostered in more leagues than that. Only because he's, I mean, he's got that sweet mustache in his ESPN picture uh, that, that you've just loved. I would let him so, take my mother I mean, out to dinner is what I'll, all I have to say. Yeah, you, yeah, you've loved him from the word go this year just just on that picture alone and if you haven't looked at it yet i mean he's worth almost spending 100 percent of your fab on just to look at his picture <laughs> on your team on a weekly basis <laughs> um but in, in all seriousness uh if mixon's out i think that that geo will ha- continue to have a role in the passing game uh, you know this year alone even when mixon was playing he's had weeks of four catches five catches three catches uh three more today um i i think that this is a a, probably a pretty low bid it seems like mixon's been banged up most of the year and then gets cleared um the fact that he tried to come back into the game um and couldn't go means that the doctors didn't see anything structurally wrong with it when they looked because i'm sure that they did um so yeah this is probably I mean, again, if you're desperate for a running back, probably a five to ten percent play, just because I'm assuming the thing with Mixon isn't all that serious. And you and you might if it it could be serious, and he could still play next week. I feel like that's the Cincinnati way, where you know it came out that he was questionable earlier this season um, with a back injury. You know, the day before the game, everybody went out and added Geo, and then Mixon had his best game of the season. So, like, who who the hell knows what's going on with the Bengals, man? Um, but yeah, this is probably somewhere in the five percent range. I guess what I would say is I'd probably go. I'd probably go, man. If I'm just trying to think about the guys that are needing to spend money to try and land one some of these players have to be desperate, right? Because you're six weeks into the season. So if you are in the back half of your league, you need to start winning. Otherwise you are not going to make your playoffs. And so you need to start spending some fab. Um, even if it's just to buy, buy one win. Um, if I'm trying to get geo, I am probably trying to spend 15% of fab 10 to 15. Uh, and, and I think that that's, that's only if Mixon's out. I think that that's being aggressive. I, I would say you're yeah. not going to know. Cause I bet, I bet he's, I bet he's probably doesn't practice until Friday or if he does, it's like limited all week. And then he's probably a game time decision for s- next week. And so you're just hoping a prayer. You probably won't know till 90 minutes before the game whether or not you're even going to be able to start Geo at all. So I wouldn't want to spend personally any more than 10% of fab and l- hopefully luck into mix and missing at least a week. Um, but if it says minor and he yeah, tried and, to come and back be- and he couldn't because, play through it, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, because the other owners in your league have just as much of a no idea as you do. I would be surprised if people are going out and spending that much on him because they don't 
they don't know what what's going to happen with mixins. So to your point earlier, don't spend zero, don't spend five. If you're willing to spend five space, you know, spend six or seven to make sure you lock them in. I think 10 is way too high um, just because of the uncertainty with this. So I, I think that because everybody's facing the same uncertainty, Mixon, yeah, he had a touchdown, uh, a rushing touchdown. So he ended up with 10 points this week. Um, so yeah, I, I, the Bengals throw the ball so much to to those three wide receivers and so even if Mixon goes out Gio Bernard is clearly not the bell cow rushing running back and he's more of a scat back and will be used as such in the receiving game you know very similar to almost like a Jarek McKinnon would would be used for the 49ers with the receptions so yeah I, I mean just think going back to the days of like Jeremy Hill and and Gio Bernard and now it's Joe Mixon and Gio Bernard Gio Bernard's going to be on the Bengals until he's like 60 at this point uh, and he already <laughs> looks like he's 60 in that picture um so yeah I, I again I think this is a couple dollar bid um and and not much more than that uh well you brought up Jarek McKinnon so let's uh let's move over to another injury based ad again we are recording this on Sunday night and uh, it did news has come out that Raheem Mostert is ruled out for the rest of the game per Adam Schefter with an injury. Now, if he's out for next week, you got to be thinking that Jarek McKinnon is going to be a priority add. Uh, Mostert finishes with 17 rush attempts for 65 yards before going out. Since then, McKinnon, it has six rushing attempts, six rushing attempts for 18 yards, as well as two catches for another 10 through the air. How much money would you be willing to try to spend on rostering McKinnon if he is available in your league? No idea. Um, if he's not available, first of all, what kind of league are you playing in? I'm kind of surprised he wasn't previously rostered considering he's had some big weeks. And I mean, we're looking at this and Jamichael Hasty is has been more productive than McKinnon. And we don't know if Coleman's coming back. And it's still the Shanahan offense where most are probably going to play next week anyway. And they have all these other guys like... And Wilson's th- there too. Just turn around and give the ball to... Yeah, Jeff Wilson. Right. Great point. So, yeah, I mean, McKinnon should be rostered uh, if he wasn't already, um, just based on his past success. Uh, he, we talked about it before, you know, is uh, is McKinnon droppable? And then literally I looked down at Twitter and, and Mostert's out for the rest of the game, but he had done nothing while Mostert was healthy. So, God, uh, a dollar to honestly so mckinnon's rostered in 63 percent of leagues it's tough yeah mckinnon's rostered in uh, almost two-thirds of leagues so he should not be available however jermichael hasty is rostered in 0.1 percent of leagues uh currently has six rushing attempts for 24 yards in this game i think you got it you probably add him if uh if moser doesn't play or I, depending on how bad his injury is so I would do a couple bucks. I would be much more interested in rostering Tevin Coleman, who's eligible to come off the IR than either than either of those guys, honestly, um, and take the home run hit potentially with with Tevin Coleman, who, you know, before he got hurt uh, against the Jets, he had 14 carries. So, you know, he, he's going to be involved in the offense when he comes back, which I think is soon. So he would be of those guys. I would add Tevin Coleman. Um, I agree. I think, uh, it's just this backfield is such a mess. It's really, you it's know, it's a different, it's a different back every week. Tevin Coleman rostered in just over 21% of leagues. So he's going to be out there too. If he can come back, uh, in the next couple of weeks, man, it's just, there's so many injuries and there's just on a team that already shuffles running backs around and then you start injuring guys. It's just, you never, I want most hurt. And then after that, I want probably McKinnon or Coleman. And I just, I want whoever the starting running back (laughs) is. And nobody else. Well, I just, I want the starter because that team's going to put up points. Uh, Jimmy Garoppolo actually uh, is showing that he can be an NFL quarterback uh, you know, being able to move the ball has three passing touchdowns against the Rams. 
uh, already with five minutes. He wasn't healthy last week. No. So yeah, he shouldn't have been playing. Anyways, um, man, what a messed up running back situation that is. But that's that's life in the Shanahan's Sh- Shanahanigans. Um, <laughs> let's move on. It's a great place to eat. <laughs> Let's uh, let's move on to our last injury-based running back ad of the week, and that is Gus Edwards. Uh, Mark Ingram suffered another ankle injury on top of all of these other injuries that we've talked about uh, on week, or I'm sorry, on Sunday, but he they are on by next week, so he does have a week to recover built into his schedule, uh, and then they don't have a favorable matchup in the Steelers uh, in week eight. Uh, all geared up for the Ravens. However, Gus Edwards did lead the Ravens and carries in week six um, and finished with a line of 14 rushing attempts for a whopping 26 yards and a score on the, on the ground in week six. He's only rostered in one and a half percent of leagues. Are you spending any fab to try and land Gus Edwards? If you think that Ingram takes a couple weeks to get back from his ankle, this guy is Dude, Just, I have I have no idea. I don't know. I mean, how are you supposed to know? He's not going away. He's had, you know, he's had two weeks carries. of four carries, and the other weeks were were 10, 9, 7, 14 today that you just mentioned. He's not going away. And they have a healthy J.K. Dobbins there, which they just apparently don't want to give the ball to. Um, maybe they'll reevaluate that during the bye week. I have no idea. At one point, J.K. Dobbins was their leading rusher. He had the most carries. And then they were up so much that they just were like, all right, we're going to give the ball to Gus Edwards instead of J.K. Dobbins, who they drafted. I, I don't get it. Um, this is a speculative zero ad for me. I would not spend any money on Gus Edwards, especially with the bye week coming up. My guess is that if you don't, you know, if somebody spends on him, that's fine. They might even drop him before this week once they realize that he's on a buy next week. Um, yeah, this is this is a zero bid. I the best running back is Lamar, and uh, I I have no idea what to do with anybody else. So this is a fun uh, ad question that we got on Twitter. Would you be willing to drop Mark Ingram to pick up Jarek McKinnon if Mostert is out multiple weeks? Yeah, I think so. Like, how sad is that for Mark Ingram this year? Just absolutely nowhere yeah. near the value of years past, even yesteryear. I like, mean, Mark Ingram going going into the week was running running back thirty seven. Um, <laughs> he scored touchdowns in two weeks to be over ten points in fantasy. Otherwise, every other week is under six points. Like. He's he's a name. He's not giving you production. No. For the Ravens, I think I was really exciting. It would not it would, I feel awful for Mark Ingram. Hopefully he gets better soon, but it was exciting to see them start to feature JK Dobbins in a little bit more of a meaningful way. Granted, he only turned 9 carries into 28 yards, so 3.1 yards a carry, mm-hmm. nothing there to really drool over. Did have a couple catches for another yard th- uh through the air. But, I mean, Lamar Jackson had like a 75-yard or whatever rushing touchdown, and they were up three-plus scores, and they just took all of the starters off the field, and they're going to save J.K. for another day after Ingram goes down. And so, hello, Gus Edwards, pacing the team in running back attempts. Um, If Ingram is out, it's definitely some sort of split. I would think it's probably... 50-50 50-50 or 60-40 in favor of Dobbins, but I would probably I would, you gotta try to roster Edwards if Ingram's out for any, you know any amount of time I would only be willing to spend a few bucks to try to land him though because they're on a buy and then they got the Steelers and you don't know if Ingram can come back in yeah. two weeks so I would only spend between zero and five dollars trying to land Edwards and honestly, I just know my benches are like, I obviously am regularly adding and dropping players. I think it would be hard for me to really drop anybody to pick up Gus Edwards. That was the thing. 
Like, because I already have a bench right, of yeah, wire exactly. guys. So it's going to be, it's going to be hard for me to go out there and try and pick them up. Um, but right yeah. to, to read you off the players on my, on my Owen five bench team that I'm currently rostering and all these guys are hurt. I mean, Alan Lazard, I'm going to keep Alan Lazard just because like, he's probably the one guy that I would drop. I'm keeping Deontay Johnson. I'm keeping Sterling Shepard. I'm keeping Frank Gore. I'm keeping Brandon Cooks and I'm keeping DJ Chark, all of whom are on my bench this week. Like none of those guys are getting in over, over the Gus bus. You know, he's sorry. It's just not allowed. And I mean, Mark Ingram isn't playing bad. He's averaging over four. I mean, he's at 4.6 yards a carry. Like he's very, he's a fine running back. They're just not giving any one running back enough carries to really get going. And so it's just a, it's almost just a stay away from the backfield perspective, unless two of those guys go down, you know, <laughs> because they're, they're still going to be in a 50, 50 split and they're not even going to be running the ball all that much anyway. Cause it's Lamar. So yeah. I just, I don't get their offense, honestly, even if they just start to favor one a, a little bit more than the others, I think is fine. But I mean, in any game that they're up multiple scores, it's Gus Edwards to close it out in the fourth. So we'll see. Um, yeah. Anyways, let's move on. Our next running back ad is zero. Been zero on him. I promise. Our next running back ad is not injury related. Uh, It is, however, J.D. McKissick from the Washington football team. (laughs) I know you hate this ad, but I actually added him, I would say, semi sneakily right before the weekend's game started. Uh, J.D. McKissick, only uh, Antonio Gibson only saw one more carry than McKissick did uh, and was, uh, however, was given one fewer look in the passing game in week six. Uh, JD McKissick went eight for 41 on the ground, plus had six catches for 43 yards through the air. He led the Washington backfield in yards and touches. His next three games are Dallas, the Giants, and at Detroit. He's rostered in about uh, 23% of leagues. He's getting meaningful touches. He had more than 10 fantasy points today. <laughs> I mean, this the the catching floor, seven receptions three weeks ago, six last week, six more this week. Like, there's a nice little floor there of about five to six points a week. And then if he's gonna start running the ball, he had eight rushing attempts against the Giants. Um I I think he's a tr- really incredible that JD McKissick is a worthwhile ad or that I think he's a worthwhile ad. I mean, he's fine, but he's a backup running back on a bad offense. Like, I wouldn't say he's a backup. And, and how much I think of he's this a one B. Well, yeah, with the B meaning bad, I just don't <laughs> understand what is like, do you, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> is, is this JB McKissick? Um, oh, I, I understand. I I understand where you're coming from. Um, there again, this is a. There's no point in in actually spending fab on him. I think there are other running backs I would much rather have. Yes, the Dallas matchup is somewhat tasty, but I mean, Antonio Gibson's your future here. I think, but I mean, the last three weeks, seven catches, six catches, six catches. It's like, what is going on? Give the ball to freaking Gibson, man. He's so good. It's like he's back in the Memphis offense. They're only letting him touch the ball a couple times a game. Um, I, uh, I, hey, I'm happy you have JD McKissick. I genuinely am happy for you. Um, I, I'm not even going to bid on him if he's available. <laughs> <laughs> so you'd prefer Gus, Ed- I, Gus I Edwards? I would hope. To JD. I hope that I have somebody already better on my roster than JD McKissick. <laughs> oh man! Well, we're getting into bye week hell, so I figure he might be a nice little bye week True. play. So, all right, our next running no, back. Yeah, I mean he's 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 fine. If you're in rough shape, yeah. I mean, he's kind of like Tariq Cohen, right? Where you're just like, yeah, I'll trot you out. You'll get a couple catches and I mean, call it a day. Yeah, I, I don't know. Say you drafted, like, say your team was 
Saquon in the first, Zeke in the second, or not Zeke in the second, Drake in the second, and uh, Miles Sanders fell right before drafts too. Like if you're if you're absolutely run over, or you know by injury, if that's your team, I probably would have quit already. <laughs> My God, that's just unlucky. <laughs> oh man! And then you took Zach Ertz. There you go. All right, our next running back here. Rough. Uh, we're going to talk about two guys because they both play for the J-E-T-S Jets, Jets, Jets. That is Frank Gore and LaMichael P. Ryan with Lev Bell officially out <laughs> of uh, the Adam Gase land. Um, Adam Gase land. Like Teenage Wasteland. Teenage Gase land. No. Um, then Frank Gore becomes the <laughs> <laughs> Frank Gore becomes the starting running back. Yes, it's probably on the worst team in the league, but he's still a starting running back uh, and should probably be rostered. <laughs> you really enjoyed that, uh-huh? uh huh? So bad. <laughs> <laughs> Frank Gore uh, went for eleven. 11- for 46 on the ground and four for 24 through the air against Miami. He's only rostered in 27% of leagues. LaMichael P. Ryan was touted by Adam Gase as part of the reason why they were fine letting go of Le'Veon Bell. Said that uh, P. Ryan needs He's more work. Idiot. P. Ryan me- needs more work so that way they aren't overdoing their 55 year old starting running back and running him <laughs> into the ground. So P Ryan had seven rushing attempts to Gore's 11 this week. He added two catches on three targets as well. He's rostered in about 12% of leagues. How much fab are you spending on either of these guys? Um, yeah, it should also be noted that the Michael P Ryan out snap Frank Gore today, uh, 39 snaps, to 25 snaps, which, um, I think is meaningful, even though Frank Gore outproduced him. um, I uh, I don't know. And until Adam Gase gets fired, um, which hopefully by the time you're listening to this episode, um, he has been terminated. Unless they're purposely trying to keep him around to get the number one draft pick this year, which might be a savvy move to just let him play out the string and lose every game. Um, I... <sighs> I don't know. I, I feel like the only player that should be rostered on the Jets is is Jamison Money Crowder. And I don't know if like I have Frank Gore on my team. I count him in a stable of six starting running backs that I have on a roster. But I'm never gonna play him. I like <laughs> so is it worth so so like here's the honest question. And I, I know we're getting into bye weeks here, and theoretically you know, Gore more than P. Ryan is probably a bi week replacement. <sighs> That's the only reason why you should keep him rostered if you already have them is to prevent somebody else from playing him. And it's more of a strategic move than it is to actually play them yourself. My guess is, is that if your team is decent and you've been listening to us, you're welcome. <laughs> that hopefully your roster is okay enough where you don't have to start a Frank Gore or a Michael P. Ryan. That is, that's the only reason why I would roster him is if you have somebody on your team that you don't feel like you need to keep and I would not spend a dollar. I would spend zero just to get them. If somebody else, you know, make somebody else spend to get them. And if nobody else spends to get them, roster them. So somebody else can't. That's the only advice that I have. Well, wonderful advice there, I guess. Yeah, I, I don't know. Neither of these guys excite me. If I had to pick, I'd probably pick P. Ryan over Gore, and I would only spend a couple bucks trying to land him just because that offense is so putrid um, and not exciting to talk about. Teenage Gase land. Let's move on, shall we, to wide receiver ads. Uh, our first recommended receiver is Travis Fulgham. Caught six of 10 targets for 75 yards and a score against the Ravens. Nearly came down with the Hail Mary at the end of the first half as well. Uh, Tied Ertz for the most targets. Ertz, as we mentioned previously, went down with an injury. Has the Giants up next week. Rostered in about 45% of leagues. How much fab are you spending 
trying to land Travis Fulgham? That's a good question. I mean, since he started playing, he's been good. He's had over uh, 12 points each week and half PPR. You know, he kind of came on uh, in that San Francisco Monday night game uh, and caught that long touchdown on the left sideline uh, to win the game for the Eagles. Uh, since then, against Pittsburgh, he had 10 catches for 152. This week, 6 for 75. He's had a touchdown in all three games that he's played. I mean, is he good? I I guess so. I mean, the, Wentz has literally nobody else to throw the ball to. Um, the last two games, he had 10 targets today, had 13 targets uh, last week against Pittsburgh. Uh, if he's going to have 10 targets every week, that, to your point, as you've put it, is elite target share. Um, because that you're you're looking at wide receiver one type targets. If if he's going to average ten targets a week, that's incredible. Um, so from a number perspective, I mean, I went and picked him up this week because he was available. Um, in a league when I was shuffling IR around, and I'm I'm happy I went and grabbed him. He's been very good. Um, forty five percent rostered. <sighs> Giants coming up, and then Dallas bye week, and then Giants again. So there is opportunity here. It does, you know, he could get diminished quite a bit as Rager comes back, as Alshon Jeffrey comes back, as Dallas Goddard comes back. So how, Goddard's you know, got to be out for the year with that same? broken I, ankle. Goddard's got to be out for the year. It's really just Rager and Alshon, I would say, that most concerned. Is me. Goddard out? I thought he was coming back. No? Did I make that up? Uh, broken ankle? I would think he's out for Either. the year. Either way. So, um, I, uh, actually, no, I guess you're yeah, right. If he's out there's, for the year, then uh, they're saying that there's hope that he returns when he's eligible, but yeah, there you go. Which, which, which is this week. I believe he's eligible to come off the IR slot. So is Rager so, in week seven. Yeah. So I, I do think that that diminishes Fulgham's, you know, season long. Um, outlook if you're desperate and those guys don't play and again um, you know this is a short week so theoretically um, those guys are not going to come back on a short week then he's probably worth a, a 15% bid probably because the production's been there and you know who knows if any of those other guys are going to be healthy yeah I, I would agree I think he's for as long as the receiving options for the Eagles remain the same, he certainly, I think, is absolutely startable as like a low end wide receiver too. Uh, certainly, very high end flex mm -hmm. play. Um, there, somebody on this team is going to have fantasy football value in in the receiving yeah. core. There will be, especially if Miles Sanders is out. They're going to lean on Carson Wentz to try to make more plays. They've just been absolutely terrible, and honestly, today's points were mostly garbage time. Um, you know, when when the game it was out all of the reach. same in fantasy. Yeah, absolutely, it does. Um, I'm excited for Rager to come back. I think he should be rostered probably close to everywhere in an IR slot. That's not counting against your bench until you have to make that decision. Mm -hmm. um, but he might not come back until after their week nine bye. Who knows? Any of these guys coming off IR. Might not come back until after the buy, but either way, for as long as those receiving options remain unchanged, I would absolutely start Fulgham everywhere. I would roster him everywhere in even 10 team leagues. I would try to roster Fulgham. Uh, Fab, I would probably yep. spend. See, that's the thing is I think that his fantasy value is going to decline over the course of the season as more receiving options come back to Carson Wentz. So I would only spend like 10% yep. on him. Um, somebody else, yep. our next guy I would spend considerably more on, that is T. Higgins, who paced the Bengals in receiving yards uh, in week six with 125 on six catches with eight targets. He was also tackled at the two-yard line and the 67-yard catch from Burrow. They have the Browns up next week. He's rostered in about 44% of leagues. The fab I'm trying to spend on T. Higgins is like 15, 20%. Like, I think that he presents weekly value, uh, weekly five to 10 targets, 
with 75 to 150 yards and he needs to get into the end zone again. Again, he was tackled at the two on a 67 yard pass from Burrow. It should have been a 69 yard pass. Um, Nice. But uh, that didn't happen. So, but T Higgins looks amazing. If you watch that pass play, the separation, um, I, I think that he is like, set value at the receiver position and certainly a low end wide receiver two, high end wide receiver three. Um how yeah, much fab I mean, would you we, spend we've on? talked about him for for three three weeks at this point. And if you if you've been listening to us and you don't already have him um rostered, then and come on. Listen to Jason. Right. He's good at this. I'm just along for the ride most of the time. But I yeah, I mean, if he's still available, I mean, again, you should have already had him. If you don't have him, he's probably worth a 15 to 20% bid to make sure that you get him. The, like, only because he, he had 125 passing yards um, and somebody might drive the value up. I think he's, of everybody we've talked about, I feel like he's got the most consistent long-term higher upside or consistent upside going forward. And I think you know what you're going to get out of T Higgins. And that is a consistent seven to eight points a week at worst. That's his floor. And when he scores a touchdown, it'll be more than that. Yeah, it was interesting. Uh, This is the first week that they got any sort of production out of AJ green. It looked like, uh, it looked like the uh, the offense finally decided to try. The coaching staff finally decided to try to move him around into a, uh, you know a little bit more matchup based plays and stop taking the deep shots on AJ Green. Um, I think that because he was playing out of the slot, so Zach Taylor really just decided to try and get a little bit more out of him, and so. That's interesting. Hopefully it's better for their entire offense as a whole, but man, Tyler Boyd is really becoming a little bit of a disappointment. Yeah, I say that's Yeah, that's who it hurt the most, right? Because that's really where Boyd operates is is in that slot. So good for AJ Green. Hopefully you haven't dropped him yet and it well, good for you if you held on to him thus far, I guess, but I I don't know, it'll be interesting to see if that continues or if that was like a one week thing. Um but yeah, T. Higgins absolutely should be rostered. I think in all twelve team leagues, uh, potentially ten teamers uh, as well. So um, let's move on. Our next receiver. This is more of a, a longer dart throw. Keelan Cole for the Jaguars posted one hundred and forty three receiving yards on six catches with nine targets against Detroit. Rostered in only fourteen percent of leagues. He has scored six and a half or more points every week and had five or more targets every week. Um, he is just, I am very frustrated, I guess, with this offense. Uh, as somebody that started LaVisca Chenault, yeah. I really thought Keelan Cole's day was going to be LaVisca's, and then it wasn't. Uh, Chark did start. Chark did nothing again. Um, yep just brutal so how much fab are you trying to spend to to go get keelan cole do you think he's a a weekly start i don't think he is because i just don't think anybody is anymore in that offense yeah so i would agree with you i mean going into this week he was wide receiver 27 uh and he just put up his highest scoring week of the season with a six for 143 uh, on nine targets, which was also the most he's had this season. Um, I mean, if you look at his snap percentage each week, it I mean it's gone up. I, I don't have this week's, but going into this week, week one it was 66 and then 68, 76, 74, 74, week five. Uh, he's on the field enough. Um his fantasy points. You know, he started out 13, 14, 6, 6, 10, 17 today. I, I mean, from a output perspective, he's been their best fantasy wide receiver so far this year. I guess. So you can't say he doesn't have value. For me, it's like, 
The only other three weeks where he went in double digit fantasy points is because he scored a touchdown in each of those three games. He only, outside of this week, he only has one other week with more than 50 receiving yards. So there's really not a whole lot of output. If he can post, you know, weekly games of 75 plus yards or more, then that's one thing. But like to me, I don't know if this was just a one week outburst. And if he's going to go back to last week's production, which was two for 25. And yeah, he had a score, but like, that's, I, I, you, I would never want to start him and I would never feel confident that he's going to produce if I did. Um, I'm just, I, I get it. He, here's why he, here's why he's a zero bit and potentially you should roster him again. I, I don't think that you need to go out and spend any crazy amount of money on Keelan Cole. The thing that will destroy his value, um, one going, you know, facing the Chargers next week, I think is a tough matchup um, for any wide receiver. Um, I think that defense is really good. And then he has a bye week. So then you're already week nine. Um, following week nine. So week 11, he's got Pittsburgh. Uh, and then his playoff schedules, Tennessee at Baltimore home against Chicago. There's just Brutal. not a lot of value there. Uh against those defenses and so that is the case for not rostering Keelan Cole is because of the matchups that he has upcoming um so if you if you have a weak bench I think you should roster him I think a zero bid's fine I don't think you need to go and spend a crazy amount of money on Keelan Cole he should be rostered in more than 14% of leagues that he's currently rostered in so you can be a nice little home haven for him with a zero bid, but those matchups are rough. Yeah. Let's move on. Shall we? Uh, I think somebody that's a little bit more exciting to me than Keelan Cole is Tim Patrick. His, he posted his second straight 100 yard game in Sunday's victory over the new England Patriots. Can't believe that they won it. First of all. Um, however, yep. I think I might be a little bit worried about his role when Hamler and Fant return to that offense. He's had 10 plus fantasy points yep. every week since week three. He's rostered in about 80, 18, excuse me. He's rostered in 18% of leagues. Alex, how much fab are you spending to trying to land Tim Patrick? This is another zero bid for me. Uh, and I would actually consider starting him next week against Kansas city, who has that weak secondary that can be thrown on. Um, and to your point, it's a great one with with Fant being out and Hamler um, not being uh, effective all that much yet, and and also injured. I um, yeah, I, and Jerry Judy's been okay. Like when and once Hamler and Fant come back, you know, is Tim Patrick the what fourth option on this yeah. offense? So yeah, again, this is a. Uh, this is a speculative ad. If you need somebody for next week, he's probably your guy based just based on the matchup. Uh, otherwise, I don't see a ton of ton of season long value here uh, for Tim Patrick, who has been really good the last two weeks. I just don't see it continuing going forward once everybody's healthy. Same. Let's move on to a, uh, a Pittsburgh Steelers wide receiver ad that is not named Chase Claypool. Who uh, did Here we go again? Did get into the end zone again this week, Alex? You were wrong about that. You're just man. It's the year of the rookie well, hold receiver. On. That, that, that was total crap. That was total crap. They, you know, James Conner gets him all the way down to the goal line, and then from three yards out, they give it to freaking Chase Claypool, who really wasn't doing much of anything. Um, I will also point out that after everybody goes and adds Chase Claypool, how many targets did he have today? Uh, targets. He had four targets. You know? He had four catches for had f- a team leading he had seventy-four four targets. Team leading seventy-four four receiving targets. yards. Team leading seventy-four receiving yards. Four. <clears throat> team leading seventy-four receiving yards. Anyways, that's not who we're here to talk about. That is James Washington, who again, in the absence of Deontay Johnson. Uh, went four for 68 and a score on seven targets. Um, I think Juju's probably... Wait, how many? Three three more than Chase Claypool? I think Juju okay. is probably unplayable 
catching two for four, two of four targets for just six yards this week against the Browns. James Washington rostered in five and a half percent of leagues. Are you spending anything on James or even trying to add him? No. No, because no, when when Deontay Johnson comes back, um, you know, James Washington goes to third or fourth in line from a target perspective. Um probably behind Claypool who's going to end up being their three and then James Washington ends up being their four. So yeah, no, I'm, I'm not even probably really adding him honestly. <clears throat> um, I mean, Deontay Johnson did practice in a limited way last week. So maybe, I, yeah, I think he's back next week. Yeah, we'll see. So I, I guess that's, I'm really excited to see, if the rubber, how the rubber meets the road for Chase Claypool and if he can actually present season long value uh, or get even what his snap percentage looks like the rest of the season. Now, let's move yep. on, shall we, to a couple guys that we just want to throw their names out there for you to look at adding, putting in IR slots because they shouldn't be just sitting out there in waiver land. Though that is Sterling nope. Shepard and Alan Lazard. Shepard is rostered in about a third of ESPN leagues, expected to be back against Philly. Uh, if he's not back, he should be back against Tampa next week. And then Lazard rostered in about 25% of leagues, had that career week against uh, New Orleans in week three, and then just sort of randomly out with this core muscle surgery since then. Um, just want to make sure that these two guys are not out there on waivers and should be in your IR slots if you have them or sitting at the end of your bench because we feel like these are a couple guys that could present some serious uh, wide receiver value for the rest of the season when they come back. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, I, and I would go ahead and throw Dallas Goddard in there too. I know I just mentioned him a little bit earlier, but he's only rostered in 24% of leagues right now. Um, he's also eligible to come off the IR slot this week. Uh, and the first two weeks that he was healthy, he had nine targets and eight targets. And it seems like Zach Ertz might be washed up. And so um, if he's going to be the number one tight end in that offense, um, then he should be rostered, especially if you have IR slots, go out and grab him. Um, because at a uh, you know relatively weak tight end position, especially this year, it seems like there's you know three guys, maybe four, um, and Dallas Goddard could be the could be a top five tight end the rest of the season once he comes back and is healthy. Um, so just somebody to somebody to talk about. They do face Dallas in week sixteen, so he could be a title winner for you if you uh, you go out and roster him now uh, at the tight end spot. Yeah, and uh, it'll be interesting to see if you know if Carson Wentz keeps performing or the lack thereof. Uh, into the future, whether or not they eventually try to turn to Jalen Hurts. Um, I mean, he did get some action. He's gotten a little bit of action against Baltimore. He had to... Theo went way too much money. You think? You don't think Hurts gets a chance at all this season? Yeah. Huh. No, not unless Wentz gets hurt. But, alright. We do have a couple tight end ads that we want to talk about. Our first being Trey Burton, who had four for 58 and a score, uh, plus a direct snap at the one yard line that he took in for a second score. I can't believe that <laughs> ridiculous. the Indianapolis Colts are designing direct snaps at the one yard line. Not to, not to freaking Jonathan, but no, it's Trey Boo Boo Child, uh, rostered in five and a, <laughs> just over 5% of leagues. Like, Unbelievable. I think he's a decent uh I I think he's a decent tight end ad. Um now what I would say is we also had an injury with Johnny and tight ends sort of just been all over the map. But Johnny Smith got hurt and missed yeah. the rest of the game for Tennessee with an ankle injury. Um I would be okay adding Trey Burton if you're desperate. Um or in like a 14 team league, I would absolutely be okay with it. But I would only spend like 5% to try to get him. Maybe less. Zero. There you go. And then zero. You can add him for a zero bid. I mean, yeah. It, it, he had he had five targets each of the last three weeks. Um, that's okay for a tight end. 
Yeah. Especially yeah. in that offense where it's Philip Rivers, loves throwing his tight ends, and they've been throwing a ton. And if they're desi- like, he has not been healthy for two years. He was good um, in the Eagles offense when Ertz got hurt a couple of years ago. Bears brought him in. He hasn't been healthy. So um, he has not played. He did not play the first three weeks this year. And since he's been healthy, he's gotten five targets each week. Potentially playable, especially if you're in a bye week spot. Now they are on a bye week this upcoming week. So you can probably wait a week, but you should be on your radar going forward. And then our next waiver wire at a tight end is Anthony Ferkser. Eight receptions, 113 yards, and a score with Janu going out, the backup tight end for the Titans. Rostered nowhere, 0% of ESPN leagues. I think if you're the Janu Smith manager, then you're absolutely out here trying to go get Anthony Ferkser as a fill in. I would probably spend close to 10% of Fab if I was desperate for tight end. Just be, especially if you're the Janu manager, just to try and get him because it's crazy how much volume Tannehill is pumping through the tight end position in this offense. But what do you that think? That was about? dirty. Um, yeah, I, I guess, I guess you're right. Um, the, the rough matchup is Pittsburgh next week. Um, and that's the week that John is probably going to miss depending on how bad that ankle injury is. Obviously we'll probably know more tomorrow. Um, so if John is only out for a week, I would temper those expectations because it is Pittsburgh. Um, and my guess is that John is not out for a longer period of time. So if you're really desperate, I guess so. Um, otherwise, I'm assuming John is coming back in two weeks. So this is just a one week fill in and it, the Steelers aren't going to give up much to the tight end position would be my guess. Now, I've been wrong on the the thrill ride that is Ryan Tannehill. And, um, you know, he's clearly throwing a ton to tight ends. And Johnny Smith has been unbelievable. So maybe I'm wrong. But um, yeah, one week, one week ad. I don't ever go crazy for a one week ad and try to add people at zero, zero dollars. And um, if I don't get them, then I'll figure it out. <laughs> All right, let's talk about some defensive streamers. Uh, I think the motto for fantasy football this year is play whatever defense is going up against the Jets if you can. Uh, I was lucky and able to do that in a couple leagues uh, with the Miami Dolphins shutting them out uh, this week. Um, other than that, do you have any favorite top streamers? 10, top 10 fantasy defense, Miami Dolphins. <laughs> do you have any other uh, board bet, baby? Do you have any other streamers there that you want to plug in for defense? This week, yeah, that I just is want to bring, Bills, by uh, the way. So, yeah, so. right, exactly. I would, um, I, I just want to plug the New York Giants real quick. And one of my cousins started the Giants against Dallas against me, um, two weeks ago. And I'm like, the hell are you starting the New York Giants for against me? Like, that's ridiculous against Dallas. And then the Giants had a pick six and I was pissed. But then I started doing like a little bit more research and I picked up the Giants and started them in our 12 man team this week. And they had another touchdown this week against the Washington football team. So that's back to back. Their sacks this year are uh, two, four, two, 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 three. And they play the Philadelphia Eagles two of the next three weeks. Carson Wentz has been sacked eight times week one, then zero, and then uh, three, three, and five. Uh, And he was sacked six times today by Baltimore. So theoretically, the Giants are going to have some sacks. And that's that's who I'm suggesting as a potential look down the line. Um, New York Giants, who are kind of sneakily been a a pretty good uh, fantasy um defense so far this year which i don't think you would have really expected uh i don't hate it um yeah i don't know their their schedule is really starting to open up to uh once they've gotten past those like first three to four weeks of the season so i i don't hate it um yeah, I mean, so, you know, their next what four weeks at Philly, homing in Tampa Bay is is not a good start. Um then at Washington who they just destroyed and then Philly again and then a bye week. So, you know, th- that 
that gets you through week 11 where you can pick them up and start them through the next four weeks and you need to fill in one other week. That's that's kind of what you're looking for from a defensive streamer perspective. They were defense 11 coming into the week, depending on how your scoring system set up. They scored 15 in ESPN standard leagues this week. Um, so they're going to be a top 10 defense um, coming out of this week and somebody that should be rostered currently. Again, 31% of, of uh, rosters right now. So probably available for you. I can't believe it. I just... That team has been so bad, and then the injury yeah, to Saquon, I just would have never even guessed. But All right. I right. think that does it for this week as we move to the social media page. Uh, just want to say thank you guys for listening, liking, subscribing. Uh, it, it's, been, it's been so many, so much fun. Um, we're getting a lot more involvement on all of our social medias now. Uh, over 100 subscribers on YouTube. If you don't like, subscribe, uh, ring the bell, please, uh, if you haven't yet. Um, and then I do want to point out that on YouTube, our Sacco of the week of the episode is the Jets because, Alex, why did you want the, the Jets Sacco to be prominent this week? I, I thought we should honor them because they dishonor themselves every time they take the field. <laughs> Oh. And also, we're pre-celebrating the firing of Adam Gase, who <laughs> um, I, I saw. I, I saw this on on um, on Twitter earlier today. Since since he was on the Bears, Adam Gase has not coached an offense that's like in the top twenty-five of the league, and he's had two different head coaching jobs since then. Like, Even how does he have a Manning? job? Fire Adam Gase, huh? No, no, since he was on the Bears, since, since they were hired him from the Bears, uh, Bears to be the Miami head coach and now on the Jets, he's never been over like top 25. It's unbelievable. Oh, boy. Uh, yeah, I just I can't believe that he's still employed, given the other uh, firings that have happened in the league. I would have bet money that Adam Gase wouldn't be around anymore. But hey, that's uh, that's what it's like to be a Jets fan or an Adam Gase you know, subject to the Adam Gase experience, you know, it's just like first Miami fans. And then now this, Oh, but yeah. Hey, welcome to week seven of the NFL season. And how great is it having two Monday night games every week because of COVID? If COVID's done one good thing, it's that we've been basically getting Monday night double headers the last like three weeks or Tuesday night football, even though it screwed me last week. It's just I like having more NFL on more nights, and I don't think my wife likes that, but I do. Good night. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Football Sackos podcast. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter at the FF Sackos.